again Olympic gold medalist here, Russell Mark from Go Shooting. Today's subject is a topic that is debated at every shooting range on earth that shoots these things. How do we break harder composition clay targets? Traditionally, a clay target is made up of a mixture of pitch and lime. To make the target harder, more lime is used. To make a big black ball of soot in the sky when you hit it, more pitch is used. The further the target needs to be thrown, the harder the clay target needs to be. As more and more ranges are being forced to use environmentally targets or bio targets, manufacturers have been forced to experiment. And of course, some variance in breakability is inevitable. Just digressing quickly, I hope you guys can recognise the irony in me talking about being environmentally friendly while standing making this video on the dry riverbed of the iconic Darling River, one of Australia's greatest environmental disasters ever. But that's the subject of another video. Okay, let's get back on topic. Trap shooters from the domestic disciplines of American trap or down the line traditionally judge how good a clay target is by how much soot is left in the air after they've shot it. Their targets go no more than 50 metres, whereas IWSF trap shooters sporting clay shooters have to throw at least 76 metres and sometimes in sporting up to 100 metres. So therefore their targets must be much harder in composition. There are now tools like this target testing device which actually prove the breakability of your target. So what do you do when you front up at a range that has a reputation for throwing very hard composition clay targets? Well the first thing most people tend to do is tighten their chokes up. If you've got the luxury of interchangeable choke tubes, that might not be a bad place to start. But is it the best option? I guess in theory, the more pellets you have on the target striking it, the better the chance it has to break. But here's the problem I have with that. Just because they're throwing harder targets doesn't necessarily mean you'll become a more accurate shooter, which you'll need to be if you shoot tighter choke. What I really recommend you try is shooting larger shot. The bigger the surface area of your projectile hitting the target, the better chance you've got of breaking it. It's the same theory that applies in hunting. Bigger projectiles for bigger game, whether you're hunting it with a rifle or a shotgun. The trade-off, of course, with bigger shot means less pellets and, of course, then less pattern density. But from my experience at the range that we're shooting most clay targets at, that really isn't an issue. If you search the social media, you'll actually find a video clip of one of the world's greatest shooters ever, George Digweed, shooting clay targets in a car park of a club in the United States from over a hundred yards away with number five shot. A word of warning though, I'm not suggesting at any stage you're going to turn into the next George Digweed just by using bigger shot. You should check at the range you're about to shoot on what their rules are in regards to the largest shot size you can use. Bigger shot travels further, so it may be restricted. Different disciplines of clay target shooting certainly restrict in terms of millimetres, the size of shot you can use, so check the rule book also. Where this becomes confusing is the English, the Europeans, the Australians, and the Americans all use different terms in millimetres of what each shot size is. So be warned, you need to check this first. Sometimes in life, size does matter. Bigger is better. This is one of those occasions. I hope this little piece of advice helps and I look forward to seeing you at a go shooting range really soon.